uh, starting on trig graphs, uh, specifically on the sine graph first, and basically what I did was I wrote three examples down of the same type of graph. Y equals the sine of theta, and theta just stands for an angle. You can actually put X in if you want to as well, but it's more proper to put in theta. You know, we're doing an angle measure, not an X value. Y equals sine of 2 theta, which means twice the angle, and Y equals sine of 1 half theta. What's really cool is, when you look at these graphs, and this is what we're going to be exploring, but this is just an introduction for right now, uh, putting a number inside with the theta, inside the parentheses, inside the quantity, actually affects the way the graph looks. And the sine graph is pretty interesting. It's a periodic graph. It's wavy. It's, well, it's not wavy. It's a periodic graph that just you know, kind of shifts up and down continually. And I'll get more specific as I get into it, but for right now, this is basically what a sine graph looks like. And it's continuous. It goes on forever like this, and it goes on forever like this. Well, if I were to put in a bigger number with the theta, or if the angle were supposed to be bigger, what ends up happening is it's basically the same graph, except um, you shrink the period. And I'll get to that too, but uh, like I said, this is an intro. So basically what happens is the graph is the same, except it becomes more squished. And when I do this one, y equals sine of 1 half theta, basically what I'm doing is I'm reducing the angle that's being uh, put in, and it just expands. It's, it's like somebody kind of you know, stretches it like an accordion. And it looks like this. And it's really cool because it gives me a good opportunity to say, you know, where have you seen something like this before? You know, where have you seen waves before? And some students will say, oh, you know, I, th I think I've seen it in music. I say, yeah. Yeah, you do see it in music, and it's a very good analogy. And this is actually where I take out my, you know, little guitar and I show. And, you know, everybody gets excited, like, oh, can you play something? I say, well, you know, I'll, I mean, I'll try something, and I, you know, do something like this. And then somebody says, isn't that from School of Rock? And I say, yeah, you know, kind of the, the same thing that's going on. So I, you know, I'll do the same thing. Basically, what's really cool is I equate this to a sine graph. If, for instance, if I were to uh, strum a um, low note, and that's a low note, you know, it's low, versus a high note, which, you know, is higher. These are actually the same note. This is an E, it's a low E, and this is a high E. What's really cool is, if you look at um, the pattern, or I guess the data, of a low note, let's say a low E, what actually happens is the graph kind of extends. The period is longer than it should. Well, the period is a longer period. It's, you know, a slow note. And that's because you're putting in a low note. That's what I tell my students. And then when you go ahead and you strum a high note, what ends up happening is the graph looks more like this. You know, it's the same note, but this one looks like it's expanded. And this one looks like it's compressed. And it's really cool. And what you can also do is you can affect um, how high or how low the graph goes. You can affect something called its amplitude. I'll get to that too. But basically what happens is the graph could you know, be higher than this. It doesn't have to just be like this. And how that's affected is, you know, like, that's a low amplitude versus high amplitude. If you put more force to something into what you strum, you get a higher amplitude. If you get uh, less force into what you do, you get a lower amplitude. And then you do stuff like phase shifts and vertical shifts. But I'll get to that, but I don't want to do it with my guitar the whole time. So that's a basic introduction. We'll actually get into what really changes a sine graph, but that's always something that I use like as a precursor for my students to get them excited about trig graphs, which are actually quite difficult and not very exciting sometimes, but, you know, it's a good way to just, you know, reflect on what it is. Anyways, I hope that was helpful. Have a good day for now. Goodbye.